This morning when I went outside, I found that the newsprint from the chronic ill, as it is called by a rather fuddy-duddy columnist, had spread from my fingertips to the whole wide sky. I got off the bus and stared at the traffic, trying to think of a very good reason to cross it and walk up the three-block San Francisco Hill to school, when V pulled up in her car and opened her door in one swift swoop. She said nothing, just beckoned, and I got in. Inside it was warm, and V was playing the Brandenburg concertos. "'Bless you!' I shouted. "'Bless you!' V emerged. "'I didn't sneeze,' she said. "'Although you are going to catch a cold if you continue to insist on taking the bus each morning.' Like many people of noble descent, V often assumed that everyone's habits were born of personal choice and not necessity. Why people chose to live in war-ravaged countries was always beyond her. Hey, this is the faculty parking lot. I always park here. The student lot is simply too shabby. What about the parking guards? Flannery, look at me. They're never sure if I'm a teacher or not. She was right. The tailored suit, along with the stockings and omnipresent pearls, brought her to that nebulous area between eighteen and twenty-eight. It was very handy when we went to nightclubs. We walked right past the parking guards, who were two huge black men. She even nodded to them professionally. When we reached the front doors, we had to go our separate ways. "'Lily and I are having coffee after school,' Fee said, "'and I'd be delighted if you would join us.' "'Sorry,' I said. "'The myriad meets today. "'Got to do the literary editor thing.' "'Thanks for the ride.' "'Anything,' she said, reaching up and fixing my collar, "'for one of the basic eight. "'Don't tell me that term is being canonized,' I said. "'I'm not sure I like it. "'It sounds too much like some mystical society, "'or like something concerned with a master race.' "'V thought for a second. "'I,' she said, and the bell rang. "'She dashed off, and that was the last of any discussion "'about the propriety of the term. "'But I've typed it into the record.' It was never a concept with which I was comfortable. So all this talk that the basic gate was some unholy alliance, some secret society, should stop with this conversation. Whatever we were, we were bound together unofficially, casually, and I objected to it loudly from the start. Or would have, anyway. The truth of the matter is that I walked all the way to school, but that conversation happened some time, surely. Plus, I needed to fully introduce V and voice my objections to my reading public to all wary parents and curious teenagers. Idea for a story. A woman loves a man, but through some slip of the tongue, everyone thinks it is the wrong man, including the wrong man himself, who begins to pursue her. When she finally makes the truth clear, all of society shuns her as a woman who leads men on. She dies alone. The story could be called A Slip of the Tongue. I didn't go to choir today. I just couldn't take it. Luckily, some people have lunch third period. Yes, lunch, third period, at a time that's even a little early for brunch. It's sickening that all over America the promising young generation is made to eat at 10.30 in the morning. So it didn't look like I was cutting class. Of course, I ran into Gabriel, who has the worst schedule on earth, world without end. He was sitting in the courtyard, staring at a sandwich so intently, it, was, it looked like he was making some sort of political statement. Black man, white bread... Hi, I said. You're not seriously thinking of eating lunch at 10.30 in the morning, are you? Seriously is the only way I can think at 10.30 in the morning, he said glumly. The worst thing is that they still haven't worked out my schedule. I still have to go to gym four times a day. There I sit, a senior, surrounded by trodden sophomores, baffling gym teachers. Quit bragging, I said. It's not difficult to baffle gym teachers. <laughs> Listen, will you walk with me? I can't face going to choir. Why, he said. Calculus I could understand, but choir? I thought nothing ever happened in choir. It doesn't, I said. I'll tell you about it as we walk. To the lake? he asked, rewrapping his sandwich. To the lake, I agreed. By the time this diary is found, the plates of the earth will probably have moved and covered up Lake Merced, a small body of bile across the street from Rower, surrounded by fairly pretty groves of trees, amidst which you can find the occasionally intertwined pear. I didn't even wait until we got there, though, to tell Gabriel everything. I told him I had an unrequited crush as soon as we reached the tennis courts at the edge of campus, which lay damp and empty and clogged with dull brown leaves. I told him that it wasn't just a crush but love, as we jaywalked across the cracked asphalt that separated Rower from Lake Merced. I told him it was Adam's state when we reached the jogging path, 
littered with dog shit and somebody's dingy, discarded sweatband. Adam State, he said doubtfully, as if I hadn't spoken. Why does everybody say it like that? I said, stepping off the path toward the trees. Because they're surprised, he said. Douglas, we expected. He's as pretentious as the rest of us. But Adam State? How did you even end up talking to him? He was in arsenic and old lace last year, remember? Adam and I both had small parts, so we ended up talking a lot. That's when I knew. I can't believe you're calling it love when you don't even have a relationship with him. I can remember my speech word for word, even though I'm writing it after school, as I wait for lit magazine people to show up, and yes, even one year later as I'm rewriting it. Gabriel, there are two kinds of love. One kind is gradual, like what I had with Douglas. We were acquaintances, we were friends, we were more than friends, we were in love. It was steady, like warming soup. It's part of a process that people go through with everybody, like with me and you, for instance. We warmed through acquaintance to friend, and we won't warm any further. But the other kind is more like Cajun cooking, like pan blackening something. I knew this metaphor would connect with Gabriel because he cooks for all our dinner parties just strikes you. It's just as delicious. It's just as real. In fact, it's probably more real. It's an entree rather than a soup. That's why I feel about Adam. It's a connection, a connection bigger and stronger in many ways than I ever had with Douglas. It's not all about the facades of shared interests or attitudes. It's something deeper. Then there's no need to despair, Gabriel said, looking elsewhere. It was almost as if he were talking to himself. If it's something that goes beyond all facades, then it's out of your control. If it's meant to be, he'll respond. If not, then it wasn't meant to be. I know when I'm feeling something that strong, I just get paralyzed and don't know what to do. Maybe he's feeling the same way and doesn't know how to respond. Do you really think so? I said, hugging him. I watched his hands flutter around for a minute before hugging me back. We're going to be late, Gabriel said, but when I told him it was my lunch period, he agreed to stay by the lake. I suppose I can cut my third English class of the day. We rounded a corner, and there was Jennifer Rose Milton, sitting on the grass in the middle of a clearing. She jumped up. Hi, guys, she said, looking behind us. What are you doing here? Having a conversation, Jen, I said. I don't call her Jennifer Rose Milton out loud, of course. What are you doing here? Alone. Oh, you know, she said vaguely, gesturing toward the lake. I'm just... Gabriel turned and gave me a look. "'We'd better go,' he said. "'We'll be late.' "'Right. Okay,' I said, and Jennifer Rose Milton smiled. We walked away and back towards school. "'She must be meeting somebody,' I said, "'and it must be somebody special. "'She doesn't have lunch with me. "'She's cutting a class. "'Jen never cuts class. "'Her grades are perfect. "'Let's go get coffee.' "'You'll have to miss more than lunch,' she warned. "'I shrugged. "'Civics, bio. "'I'll be back in time for Millie. "'We can walk to the Mocha Monkey.' We walked to the Mocha Monkey. The Mocha Monkey is an embarrassing cafe, but it's the only one within walking distance of Rower. We usually end up there after school dances. It's also one of the few cafes open late. It's embarrassing not only for its name, but also for the monkey faces embroidered on each of the chairs. You can try to have a meaningful conversation, but all the while in the back of your head, you know you're sitting on a monkey's face. I ordered a latte, and Gabriel had tea, which was served in its own individual pot with a monkey's face painted on it. The two of us sat there for most of the afternoon, talking and laughing there in the monkey house. Lit meeting went fine. Jennifer Rose Milton came, of course, and so did Natasha. And so did, drumroll please, none other than Rachel State, freshman sister of Adam, a waif of a girl swathed in black clothes and white makeup. Natasha nicknamed her the Frosh Goth on the way home, as we sat in her car listening to Darling Mud, and trying to think of ways I can abuse my power as editor-in-chief to get to Adam through, this gloomy, through his gloomy sister. She invited me to spend the night. There was a diatric movie on TV she wanted me to watch with her, but I declined, not that I attended enough classes today to have much homework. But I wanted to read Bradstreet and write some poetry of my own, and think about wise Gabriel's words and what was meant to be.
While I sat around last night, waiting for Adam to call, somebody must have sacrificed a lamb or something, because all of yesterday's gray was all burned off, and by the time I was riding the bus to school, the sun was searing through the tinted windows, like something that killed all the dinosaurs. I reached into my bag and immediately found my sunglasses in a rare case of morning luck. I put them on and didn't talk to anyone. I looked for V when I got off the bus, hoping that V's gorgeous car could become a permanent morning motif. But as yesterday's ride was added, as you remember, one year later in rewrites, V, of course, was nowhere to be seen. Halfway up the hill, however, Kate tapped me on the shoulder. I've been calling out your name for an hour and a half, she said. You walk extremely fast. Quickly, rather. Didn't you hear me? Well, for most of an hour and a half ago, I was home across town, so no, I said. Kate rolled her eyes. Hey, she said, did you invite Adam to our dinner party last night? No, I said, and I don't want to talk about it. Okay, she said, lining up a new subject like the next bullet in the chamber. I wish to attend an extremely modern event tonight, with you if you're free, the cinema. What's playing? It's Benjamin Grenaud's new movie, Henry the Fourth. Kate was the only one of us who could successfully pronounce Grenaud every time. Of course I'll go. Want to do dinner beforehand? Sure. And speaking of dinner, do you want me to invite Adam for you? Not to discuss the undiscussable, but discussing it anyway. I guess you'd better. We shouldn't hold our breath waiting for me to make a move. Well, suit yourself. By now we were at the side entrance, which is closest to Kate's homeroom. The PTA had placed a welcoming sign there which said, Welcome! Hope your summer prepared you for a year where you will be pushed to the limit academically, athletically, and socially framed by smiling faces drawn in magic marker. I'm pretty sure it should be a year in which you will be pushed. Kate leaned against the doorway and absentmindedly poked one of the faces in its eye. It will be a shame, though, if Adam gets stolen by somebody who writes love letters to him over the summer. To introduce yourself like that over the summer, when nobody can do anything about it, is so tacky, don't you think? Speaking of love lives, I said, plowing on, do you know if Jen has seen anyone? That's one of my missions for today, Kate announced. Do you know that she cut class yesterday and went to the lake? Gabriel told me. If she was meeting somebody, it must be somebody very interesting if she doesn't want us to know. I was with Gabriel, I said, eager to be considered a primary player in all this intrigue. She acted really flustered when Gabriel and I ran into her. She was definitely meeting somebody. I can't believe you don't know who it is yet. Are you losing your touch, Matahari? Certainly not, Kate said archly. I just found out about this lake incident late last night. Give me time. The bell rang. Time is something I don't have, I said. I've got to run to my date with Lawrence. Who? She shrieked after me, but I didn't look back. You're always guaranteed more attention from Kate if you keep her on the edge of her seat.